right, good morning everyone. Welcome uh, to today's lecture. So today we're going to talk about perspective projection. So um, we said that in, in graphics, of course, we want to create 2D images of 3D scenes and we already talked about a lot of things, but we never talked about how we can actually project those 3D objects to the two-dimensional screen. <clears throat> And uh, this is what we're going to talk about today, which is uh, perspective projection. So there are different ways to, <clears throat> because when we see things in reality, of course, we have a certain perspective of it. it ch the perspective changes depending on where we are standing and where the objects are with respect to us. If they are further away, for example, they, are usually, they, are, they, are sm they appear to be smaller for me as an observer. And uh, there are different ways to do perspective, and in graphics we usually deal with so-called linear perspective, which is a perspective that preserves or all kinds of uh, perspectives that preserve straight lines. So a straight line becomes, in reality, becomes a straight line in the image. Uh, a good example for something that is not a linear perspective is, for example, fish eye views. If you have a fish eye or wide angle camera and take the picture, then a line in the in reality might become uh, uh, a, not, uh, a bounded line or a straight line in the image. So, uh, <clears throat> and of course, these are all uh, uh, can also be done in in graphics. But usually, then we don't. We even then we usually do a linear perspective and then transform the image instead of creating these uh, distorted perspectives in the first place. Good. So we're talking about linear perspective, and there are two major distinctions that we make. One is the so-called parallel projection, and the other is the perspective projection. A parallel projection is basically something that just projects everything straight uh, into one viewing direction, whereas the perspective projection, like the name says, considers perspective. So let's look at the parallel projection first. The parallel uh, projection is defined by a uh, projection direction and an image plane where we want to uh, project to. So we have, for example, these triangles here in 2D, and then we have defined a direction, which in that case is the opposite of this uh, axis, which makes the calculation very easy because we just have to throw away basically this coordinate. So if we have a point here, x, y, and if this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate, then we just, if we project in opposite x direction, we just throw away the x value and get here the projected point, which is then this y value, let's call it y dash. early in the morning. Computer doesn't want to work either. Good. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this is basically uh, the idea of uh, um, parallel projection and called parallel projection because you see all the projection lines are parallel because we just define a direction which is independent of location. So we just project in a certain direction. And there is this distinction between orthographic and oblique. Orthographic is when we are projecting in the viewing direction. So if our viewer is standing here or standing here and looking at the object, then we call it an orthographic projection. If he is standing somewhere else and looking at the image plane, then we call it an oblique projection. Um, there are different definitions of this, and actually in the old version, the second version of the book, they don't even mention parallel projection, but they mention orthographic projection, and this is the only thing we are going to cover in this course. So if I use parallel projection, I usually mean orthographic projection, even if I don't explicitly say it, and I use the two terms uh, uh, interchangeably. <clears throat> Good. Um, yeah, and the characteristics of this is, of course, that by just projecting everything there, parallel lines keep uh, parallel, and also it preserves the size and the shape of an object because we're just basically throwing away one coordinate and then just see it from one side. But of course, this is not very natural because in reality, we know if we have, for example, a, a square and it's a big one and we look at it, then the further it moves away, the closer the lines get together. So a parallel line is not necessarily reflected to a parallel line like we see here in this cube here, we have two parallel lines, and this is now with a perspective considered. Then you see these two lines are no longer parallel because the distance from here 
to here is different than the distance from here to here. So <clears throat> we see here the, the perspective is basically that the characteristic is that if something is further away, it becomes smaller for me as observer. Of course, it doesn't become smaller, but it looks smaller for me because I'm further away from it. And the mathem mathematical definition or description of it is that we define a viewpoint like a camera or an eye and then we project towards this viewpoint until we hit the image plane and then we draw our projected points here and then you see these are the very same triangles but this green triangle is further away so that the projection here becomes smaller than this distance here because the blue triangle is closer so it looks larger <clears throat> Yeah, so this is pretty pretty straightforward, I think, but you know, <clears throat> now this is the, the way to mathematically describe and then calculate it. Again, we distinguish between oblique and non-oblique, but this is just for completion here, so you don't have to know that. I just put it here to our, uh, so uh, for completeness reasons. <clears throat> and of course, the characteristics now is that the objects are further away, then they, if objects are further away, they become smaller, like it is in reality. So perspective projection looks more natural and more realistic, which is why usually in graphics, when we're dealing with projection, we deal with perspective projection. Nevertheless, parallel projection has its usages, for example, in uh, mechanical, uh, in mechanics or in, in architecture. Basically, every time the size and the the orientation, like parallelism of lines become an issue, then it's sometimes important to represent a less natural image, but that preserves these character, demonstrates these characteristics better. And that's when we use parallel projection. The other reason why parallel projection is very useful is that it is very simple to do. And we will see now how we can do proje perspective projection by reducing it to parallel projection. So we have two, uh, two interests in parallel projection. So the big question we want to deal about today is uh, how we can get the 3D objects on the 2D screen in a way that preserves the perspective in a correct way. Good. Um, in, in practice, usually uh, UI API takes care of this, so you just you don't need to know the correct matrices. So we will use matrix multiplication again to do this, but you don't need to always know those matrices because there is a lot of this done in your API. But of course, it is uh, always good to know what's going on behind those function calls when you uh, initiate them, because sometimes this helps you also figuring out when you have a bug in your program uh, or to switch from one API to a different one where the matrix matrices are slightly different. And if you don't know how the matrix look like, this is much more difficult for you to understand or to adapt to the new API. And of course, it's also a good opportunity to uh, improve your math skills, which for some people is uh, important looking at the exam results. I'll say something about that later. Good. Um, yeah. So perspective projection. How do we get the 3D pro uh, objects on a 2D screen? Um, like always, when we have a very difficult task, we can, the best way to solve it, to split it in subtasks that are very easy, that are easier to solve. And in fact, this task, we can split it in subtasks that can all be solved by matrix multiplication. So let's start from the beginning. We have a 3D scene specified. So we have them specified in a coordinate system. Let's call it the world space. Um, which is defined by three base vectors, let's say. So we have a Cartesian coordinate system, and let's call them x, y, and z. So this is, uh, I, I tried to make 3D drawings, but after a while I gave up. So I just make the 2D drawings there, easier to, to explain the, the concept, which is why I have this weird uh, uh, coordinate system. The Y is pointing outside of the screen. So this uh, notation comes from, if you think about an arrow like this, then if you look at it from the top, it looks like that. If you look at it from the bottom, it looks like that. And that's why these two signs here are often used to indicate if a line points, a uh, vector points into or out of the screen or out of your, your paper. Good. So, yeah, so uh, we have a, a base basis a three in a three-dimensional coordinate system. And now we have an arbitrary camera position, uh, position and we want to do a perspective projection towards this 
camera here. So we have our image projected onto uh, our scene projected onto this image plane. So we need to specify the camera, of course. So we specify this by saying, oops, by saying we have, uh, it's early in the morning. <laughs> so I have an I vector E or camera vector C, depending on where, how, how you uh, say it. And we have a gaze vector E which points directly towards this image plane in a right angle. So this is the, the viewing direction. And of course, we need to specify the image plane. So we need to specify the field of view. So how wide the camera is here. This is our uh, field of view. And we need, of course, specify the distance of the, of the image plane from the camera. We could do this by these two parameters, but usually in graphics we, de uh, we specify this by, by other parameters, but we specify this by six planes. The first two planes are the left and the right plane. So from the camera, this is the left side and this is the right side. So we have two planes here. Then we have a near plane N, which specifies then our image plane and the left and the right border are the intersection between these planes here. And then we have, of course, in 3D also a top and a bottom plane, because in 3D we get something like this cut-off pyramid. And uh, now you see we also got this, so this is the rough sketch of the 3D version, uh, where the camera is here. And um, <coughs> You see here, we also have this far plane here. So we're also restricting ourselves here. Oops. With a far plane, that's the near plane. And the reason for that is, of course, um, in theory, we could say we can look into infinity if we are outside and there is nothing there, but we cannot see everything that is in infinity, so it doesn't make any sense to calculate with stuff that is like millions of kilometers away. And in practice, we actually even cannot do it because if we would not put an upper border there, we would have to deal with infinite numbers and we cannot calculate with an infinite number, which is why we restrict ourselves to a certain distance, which is specified then by this far plane. And the whole thing is then called the view frustum. Oh, here it is, sorry. The view frustum. In the book, they often use the term view volume instead. Um, but uh, yeah, I usually use view frustum because it is a volume and it contains everything we can view. And uh, for today, we will restrict ourselves to objects that are completely within this view volume. So we will not look into objects that intersect with it and not look into objects that are outside. We will cover this uh, next lecture, but today we will assume that our whole scene is covered in that view first. So this is basically what the camera can see. And uh, now we want to do this, this projection. And um, it kind of seems intuitive that if we had the camera placed at the origin, or if our coordinate system would be here at the camera position, it would be kind of probably nicer and uh, uh, easier to do the calculations. Now, the good thing is we can easily achieve that by moving the coordinate system or moving the camera to the origin. So, and we call this switching from the world space where we specified our objects to switching to the camera space. So this is just a simple transformation of coordinate system. We already have covered this and we will look into this particular one later. So if we do that, the camera is at the origin and you see, for example, why this is easier. So if this is the origin and this is then your, your near plane, then you just have a plane that is parallel to this plane here, which is defined by the two base vectors. So it seems obvious that the calculation here is much easier. Um, we'll say to see another example where it's really clear why it is uh, makes sense to do this transformation. And uh, per convention, we usually use the, the negative set axis. We turn the camera in a way that it points towards the negative set axis and um, then the Y points out of the screen, and that was actually badly drawn. 
it should have been this would be better because then I can draw my x here because then we have a right-handed coordinate system x y to the top and the set is pointing out of the screen and that's why the neg we point the camera into the negative set axis of course there are other conventions uh, because uh, there are other ways to do this because it is just a convention but when we do the calculation later it's important to keep that in mind that we're pointing in a negative set direction good so we said now we moved the camera to the uh, <coughs> to the origin and now we have to do this uh, perspective projection but um, um, towards towards this this uh, image plane here but um, of course if we could do an orthographic or parallel projection this would be much easier because then it we could just if we have three coordinates x y and z and this is the, the negative set axis, then we can just do the projection by throwing away the set value, so we don't have to do any calculation at all. So if we could do a, 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 an orthographic projection, this would be very easy if we have the camera position at the origin, like I said, well, that's why one of the reasons why we did this transformation, because it turns out we can actually do that by transforming the view frustum in the so-called orthographic view volume and the orthographic view volume is basically just a box that contains the same objects as the view frustrum but also in uh, with the same uh, space wise and location wise and uh, um, sizes so the sizes is, is, is transformed into the orthographic view uh, volume in a way that the sizes are preserved in a way that if we do a perspective projection with the view frustum, we get the same result as if we do an orthographic projection, a parallel projection with the orthographic view volume. So you see here, since we are pushing it together, this size here of the triangle becomes smaller because the later part of the view frustum is pushed together. And if we would have, for example, a square here or a rectangle, that is parallel to the axis, then you would see here that it would become smaller at the end, so it would no longer be a rectangle, but it would lead to the same image here if we would project it. And the good thing is that, again, we can do this with a matrix multiplication. It's a little more difficult. This is actually the most difficult step in the whole matrix multiplication steps that we are going to do, but nevertheless, we can do it, and we will see later how. Good. Now. Uh, Another simplification that we do is that we transform, usually transform our data from the orthographic view volume to the canonical view volume, which is a cube that is centered around the origin with the length of two. So it goes from minus one to one. And again, yeah, on, on this side I have to draw it. Minus one to one. And here also to one minus one and the same in, in the third dimension. So we have a three-dimensional cube with a size of two centered around the origin. The reason for this is just that it makes the calculation easier with the numbers that we have. So we just do this and this is just a simple translation and scaling. So again, we can do it with matrix multiplication. And if we have it there, then we can do a simple projection on the screen space. So this is just a parallel projection here. So we just take the, the values and project them here by throwing away the third coordinate. So we throw away this coordinate and then we project it over here. And now you see I drew the coordinate system. It's no longer a 3D, 3D coordinate system, but it is a 2D coordinate system. And I drew it over here because it doesn't matter in which direction I draw it now because in this direction here, we don't have any values anymore because we are throwing away this set value. Good, so we have a two-dimensional image now, but it is the size of uh, my, from minus one to one. And then, so that means we have to do a final windowing transformation to put it on the final screen or the final window that we want to have, which is then an, oops, why did I not write this down here? An NX and Y window. And this goes from minus one to one. So we have to do the mapping here. And this is just a simple windowing transformation that we already saw. So uh, you saw that uh, we have these uh, steps here that 
we can do once after each other and we started with the world space here so you cannot read this but I put it here so you see the images that give, gives you a little bit an idea of the of the overall steps so we have the world space where the camera is here and then we end up in the screen space where we have our triangles on the pix uh, or, uh, as pixels on the screen and each step here the output of each step is the input for each other so we have a pipeline here and this is exactly what people usually think about when they talk about the graphics pipeline in addition to other stuff like shading and so on but this is one of the most important parts of the graphic pipeline which is the part that puts the 3d into the 2d on the screen so it's called here part one because there are there is more of course um, <clears throat> but this is the the one of the most important steps uh, parts these are one of the, some of the most important steps in the graphics pipeline and uh, you saw that we can do each of these steps with a matrix multiplication so let's look into these kind of uh, matrices that we need for these steps good so let's start with the uh, the easier things so let's start here at the bottom with this windowing transformation so we want to have as a result our triangles on the screen and we get them in the canonical view volume so we have a cube a 2 cross 2 cross 2 box from minus 1 to 1 centered around the origin and um, <clears throat> then we have of course our scene in there so we have triangles here which are already preserved in the correct position in the space already scaled and transformed correctly so we just need to project them on the screen which means we're just throwing away the set axis then we get a 2d image and then we just need to project this 2d image that goes from minus one minus one to one one here at the top right to this nx and y cross nx cross and y size image and this is just a simple scaling no it, it, there are two operations here one is you see here the origin is in the center so we need to move the origin to the bottom left of the image now you see here this here is directly in the center and the center here is n x divided by 2 and the center here is away from this point and y divided by 2 and that's why we need to move here by n x divided by 2 and y divided by 2 remember translation these under translation these are the images of the origin under the affine transformation which is the translation in this case so these are the images of the origin so the origin here ends up at this point here and then we have moved our coordinate system here and of course then we need to do a scaling and we need to basically blow up the image actually it would have been easier to explain it the other way around but yeah anyway so we have a minus one to one image and we want to blow that up to n x and y so you see obviously we have to multiply it with n x half to increase it in both sides that's why I thought I said it's easier to explain it the other way around although in that case it, it doesn't matter which operation you do first but you see this is just a simple scaling and this is the simple scaling matrix where we just have these two values that increase our x and our y values so you see this is actually pretty simple with what we already learned in the previous lectures there is one thing you have to take care of in practice in practice um, when we're dealing with pixels we usually have pixels uh, represented by the center of a unit square with index uh, integer coordinates so we basically have here zero and here we have one so if we do it just like that we end up in this corner here which is why we have to remove half a point here uh, a half uh, a unit here so the actual Tri rectangle of the of the uh, of the screen is not zero and x it's minus one half and x minus one half and that's why we have this additional value or factor here good yeah so this is just a simple technical thing 
Good. And uh, yeah, so, so you realize here we do the uh, projection. It's an autographic projection, so we can just throw away the set coordinate. But of course, as I said, we want to integrate this in a whole pipeline. And before we throw them away, we need the set coordinate, which is why for the matrix, we just uh, integrate here these dummy lines here, which are always zero, except for the one here at the set value. And you see now, if we multiply this with a vector, it doesn't change the set value. So we just keep the set value along before we throw it away in the end. But this way, we can later combine the matrix with the others. So you, you will see that why we do that when we combine it. Good, so we have the final matrix for the viewing transformation. So we can now transfer objects from the canonical view volume to the screen space by multiplying it with this matrix here. So the next question is, of course, how do we get from the orthographic view volume to the canonical view volume? And this is, again, just basically a simple scaling transformation and moving off the, off the coordinate system, because the orthographic view volume is an axis parallel box where you have the objects preserved in the right size. And then, of course, when you do it to the orthographic uh, uh, view volume, you get it uh, to the canonical view volume, you get them also here with the same size and position and relations preserved. And the, uh, the transformation, so we have to do, again, two, two things here. One is we have to move the center of the box to the origin. So this is uh, the center of the box. And you see that this matrix does it, for example, if you look at this, the first, the X coordinate, you see here, if this is left and this is the right plane, then you see obviously the center is L plus R divided by 2. I think I used that uh, notation when I introduced the linear interpolation last time. So this seems quite obvious, and we're moving the box to here. So we have minus L plus R divided by 2. Same for bottom and top, near and far for the Y and Z uh, uh, coordinate, respectively. So this operation moves our coordinate system to the center, or moves our box around the center, uh, moves the center of our box around the coordinate system. And then all we have to do is the scaling. And again, you see this uh, relatively easy by uh, why these factors do the scaling. So here we have minus one to one, and this is L and R. So this distance here is R minus L, or no, let's, well, it's probably better to write it. Uh, can delete that. All right. Um, this is R minus L half. I'm doing this because we have here in the in the center we have the origin. So here we have negative values. But if we stay on the positive side, you see here uh, that this is correct. And here we have one. So if we want to map from 1 to r minus l divided by 2, we have to just multiply it with r minus l divided by 2. That should be obvious. And that also makes it clear why the opposite direction, if we want to go from r minus l to 2 and map it to 1, is just multiply it with the reverse. So times 2 minus l. And this is exactly what we have here. And the same for the top and the near and far plane. Good. Now, and since we know that matrix multiplication is associative, we can combine these matrices. So this is our final matrix for the orthographic view volume is then this matrix here. It looks a little more complicated. That's why I split it into two matrices and then multiplied it instead of introducing the combined matrix in the first place, because here the, uh, the right side looks a little more uh, difficult to understand than if you look at it separately. Good. So um, our last two steps we have now, we have the matrix for this step, we have the matrix for this step, and since it is associative, we can just do them after each other, but mind the order. 
so this is the last matrix that we do and no this yeah <laughs> i did it uh, said it wrong now this is the last matrix that we do and this is the the second but last matrix because we're multiplying from the right side. Good. Now the next step would be this uh, view frustum to the, the orthographic view volume, but since I said this is the most complicated step, I will do that after the break, and before the break we talk about the first step here, which is moving the world space to the camera space, moving the objects from the world space to the camera space. So we have our camera, you remember we have our world space defined by set, minus set x and y and we have our camera defined by an i vector e that spe specifies a position and then vector g so e is the vector here and uh, <clears throat> now we want to have it the camera basically everything moved to the center of the origin so we want to express the objects with respect to that coordinate system around the camera so we can later do very easy orthographic projection towards the camera and uh, to do that obviously we need to have a coordinate system for the camera and we already talked about how to get a coordinate system from one vector when we talked about rotation about an arbitrary vector in 3D where we basically did the same thing it's the, the approach was we created a coordinate system then we rotated everything to the origin, then we did a rotation around one of the axes, and then we rotated everything back. And for that we needed to map two coordinate systems to each other, and this is exactly what we need here as well. And if you remember, to create that we just chosen a random vector, and then created the cross product with it. In this case we actually need a special vector, we cannot create a random vector, uh, take a random vector, because if we would... So, so we have the gaze vector, which is the first vector, of our coordinate system and <clears throat> if we would now from the gaze vector just create a random vector and then create the cross product which is in a right angle of it then we get a vector that is in a right angle to G but it might not necessarily be parallel to the image plane which is what we want here so to do this we have to use a special vector which is a view up vector, which is also not unique, but it has special characteristic, which is that it basically splits the plane from the viewer perspective into a left and a right half based on the gaze vector. So if you assume you draw uh, a plane through the gaze vector that is straight up into the sky, like this here, then the view up vector is basically any vector on that plane here. And that is then our vector t. And then we can do simple cross product. g cross t is our vector v. Then we take v cross g. That's our vector w. And our vector g becomes the vector u and then we have to do a normalization first we need an orthograph uh, uh, orthonormal base and uh, then we have our camera coordinate system which is exactly like this here good and then we can do the transformation which is something that we already learned so remember um, We said that we want to move everything to the origin. So we make a translation and for the translation the right column are the images of the origin under the translation. So this is the vector E and if we want to have the origin here we have to, uh, if we, after doing the transformation the origin is at the position minus E. So this is why this comes in here and then so then we have here the coordinate system collide, but they're probably not on the right spot, so we have to rotate them. And now remember that if we do a rotation, which is a linear transformation, the vectors, the column vectors, are the images of the uh, 
of the base vectors after the linear transformation. And these are, we had this before, just the vectors that we have here, the u, w, and v vector. But I said the column vectors. Now, if you look here, you have u, v, and w in the rows. But that is because um, we want to move the coordinate system to the camera. So we use the inverse here. And that is, since we have an autonomous uh, uh, coordinate system, just exchanging the rows and the columns in this case. So it's just the transposed. Good. Yeah, so we, we already had this, but uh, this is a good opportunity also to repeat it. Good. So we can do now um, rotation of the camera system. We can do the orthographic view volume to the canonical view volume, and we can do the canonical view volume to the screen space. So if we would want to have parallel projection, we would be done, because then we can just rotate do the parallel projection by throwing away the set coordinate and then we get our result by this simple matrix multiplication. And uh, now we'll go to the perspective projection, but I think it makes more sense to, to not to start this before the break because it will take longer. So let's make a 15 minutes break now.